to the Little Miss Funeral YouTube channel. For my second video, I thought that I would share with all of you the story of my first ever home transfer. Now the term removal can also be used in place of the word transfer, and this is the act of a funeral firm or funeral director picking up a person from where they passed away and taking them into their care back to the funeral firm. When I was 19 years old, in between my two semesters at mortuary school, I got a job working part-time for a funeral firm. My job description was basically working calling hours and visitations, helping out the mornings of funerals, and filing death certificates. One day, however, I got a phone call from the funeral director. A gentleman had passed away and he needed somebody else to go to the house to help him. Looking back on this, I'm very thankful for a couple of different things. The first thing that I'm very thankful for is the funeral director that I was working with was a very caring and patient man. Because I never did anything like this before, he walked me through step by step what I had to do. The second thing that I'm very thankful for is the gentleman passed away on the first floor of his home. For seasoned funeral professionals, you know that if somebody passes away on the second or third floor of a residence, it can be very difficult to get them downstairs and get them through hallways. The third thing that I'm very thankful for is this gentleman could not have been more than 130 pounds. Do you think I can lift anything? No. Well, this funeral director calls me and the first thing that I do is get dressed. I wore a pair of black skinny jeans, a black t-shirt, and a pair of sneakers. My mentality behind this was that I'm going to pick up a dead body, and if I get dirty, I don't want to be wearing my nice clothes. When I look back at this, I cringe. I never had anybody tell me exactly what you need to wear. And for those of you listening, let me tell you, you don't want to wear what I was wearing. You want to wear a suit or nicer clothes, you are representing a funeral firm. So we get to the house and the funeral director walks in with me and we introduce ourselves to the family. We let them know that we're from the funeral home and we're going to be taking their loved one into our care. Once we assess the situation, we quickly realized that we weren't going to be able to bring a stretcher into the home. In a lot of older homes, because of the hallways, you just can't get a stretcher around the curves. So a Reeves is what we use. Now a Reeves is going to be the tool that funeral directors use. It's basically a mat, if you will, that has handles on it. So you can place the person on to it and use the handles to carry them out. So he went to the gentleman's head and I went to his feet. He instructed me how to lift him and place him on the reeves. We then carried the gentleman out of the home and placed him on the stretcher that was outside of the funeral director's van. The whole experience didn't take more than 15 minutes. Looking back, it could have gone a lot worse. The gentleman could have been heavier, he could have been on a different floor, he could have been deceased for a couple of days. It was a pretty positive experience for me overall. Now for funeral professionals out there who are just starting out, I have some advice for all of you. The first thing that I would recommend is getting a gym membership. When I started working in a funeral home, I got a gym membership so I could go and try to lift weights and bulk up. I don't do much transfers anymore, so I've kind of stopped going to the gym a little bit. The second piece of advice that I have for all of you is don't be afraid to ask questions. Anytime I get a death call, I will always ask specifics about the situation. In what room is the person? Ask the weight of a person. If somebody is going to be obese and if you're going to need more help in order to properly do this transfer, you have to know that before you get to the residence. The worst thing is arriving unprepared. For female funeral directors who are going to be doing a lot of transfers, wear flats because it's going to be easier and safer for you guys. If somebody passes away at home, and let's say that they pass away at their home hospice or in their bed, after you do the transfer, make the bed. A nice little thing that you can do if you want to go above and beyond that is to leave a flower in the place in where they passed away. When a family goes back into the room in which a person passed away and they're no longer there, it can be very comforting for them to see a flower or to see a little handwritten note. It's this little
little thing that can make the world of a difference to these families. Another thing to note is if you are going to a person's home, be respectful. You're going into their own personal place and it can be very sacred for them. And you're entering their home and their lives during one of the most difficult times that they may ever have to experience. Sometimes you do have to move furniture and move items in order to properly do a transfer. You always want to move things back to where they were. It's just always important to remember that you're dealing with people during one of the most difficult times of their lives. And you are there to take somebody who is so special to them. That person may just be the shell of a person now, but that's still the shell of somebody that they love. So I hope that you all enjoyed my little story of my first ever home transfer. I hope that some of my advice to you can be helpful. For those funeral professionals who are watching this video, if you have any advice that you'd like to give people who are just starting out in this field, please leave them in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> and I